Hey everyone, welcome back to Cody Tarot. I'm your tarot reader, Cody. So for today's pick a card, we are going to be doing... Wow, I totally spaced on the reading that we're doing. Hold on, I have it written down. Okay, today's, <laughs> today's reading is how and when you will meet your person. So this person, you can think of this person as any kind of like idealized future part in your mind. So if you're thinking of it, you can think of this person as your future spouse. Uh, you can think of this person as your soulmate. Whoever you're looking forward to meeting, the cards basically by each pile or each crystal are going to give you that indication of how and when you're going to meet this person. Anyway, let's get into the reading. So for our first group, we have this candle quartz. For our second group, we have this aragonite. For our third group, we have this amethyst cluster. For our fourth group, we have azurite. For our fifth group, we have black kyanite. And for our last group, we have aquamarine. Stick all the time you need to pick your crystal. You can pause the video here if you need to. Remember, there is no right or wrong way to pick your crystal. Whatever way that you pick your crystal to get you the most accurate reading is probably the correct way. Well, it is the correct way. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'll give you a moment to pick your crystal now before we move on with group number one. All right, we're going to move on now with group number one with the candle quartz. Hey, group one, this is if you picked the um, candle quartz right here. Kind of a cool little cathedral patterns on this one. Okay, so let's get into your reading. I already pre-drew the oracle cards for this pile, and then I'm going to draw shuffle the tarot cards on camera. But your oracle cards that popped up upright, we had... Um, well, actually, I don't know why these are upright. These popped up down like that, but I flipped them over upright. These ones flipped up upright, though, the horse and the hawk card. So we have um, these kind of energies are representing uh, you and your person. And then um, we also have with the oracle cards, luck is on your side, new moon in Sagittarius, a time for he healing, balsamic moon. This group got two moonology cards came out. And we also have by the book. Um, and now we're going to draw your tarot cards, and then we'll get into your reading. some stuff up a little bit so we can hopefully that looks good okay so let's flip over your tarot cards the one that flipped up upright was the three of swords in reverse and your second tarot card is the three of cups upright we have the king of cups upright the six of cups upright and the Eight of Pentacles upright. Okay, let's get into your reading. So there's a few indicators with the Eight of Pentacles and by the book that you basically with your future spouse or your, your future person, you could meet them in kind of an educational situation with like in a school environment, basically. Um, what we have here first, we have horse representing you and hawk person representing your future spouse. 
or your other person. I keep saying future spouse, but if it's you're just looking for a soulmate, you're not looking to get married to anyone, that counts as well. Um, so as far as timing goes, we have luck is on your side, new moon in Sagittarius, and we have balsamic moon, a time for healing. The time for healing is just reiterating this card right here, how there's almost like this time period where you're going to be pushing off healing a certain part of yourself. So there's going to be some kind of wound or trauma or situation that had hap has happened to you and you're pushing it off. And that's kind of like the start to the story of how you meet your future spouse. Um, your future spouse, what I'm seeing here, they are a little bit multifaceted. With the hot card right here, I'm definitely getting this idea that, first of all, because they're a flying animal, they like their freedom. They like to be roam and fly around and stuff. And they're definitely very perceptive. They have the big picture in mind, and they can see all the building blocks for basically the overall big picture of the whole situation, basically. With horse card, this is representing you, and this is representing how you're, you're a very strong personality, almost like... Um, I wouldn't say the word dominant, but there's definitely something about like strength coming through here. Um, I think the horse card is the final card of the earth animals in this deck. And so first of all, it's just mentioning that you're very grounded and you kind of have this grounded nature. And with the crescent moon on the third eye right here, there might be something with your psychic, uh, your psychic senses or your intuition being connected to the cycles of the moon. Uh, with luck is on your sign, new moon in Sagittarius, we have this whole kind of like reassurance that like when you're going to meet your person, luck is on your side. Through this journey, it's almost like you'll be pushing off this thing that you're trying not to heal or that you're not like really addressing basically. And um, you kind of get kind of lucky because you're in, in a sense, you're like avoiding it. We see that it's just, it's not that you're avoiding it. It's just that it's not the right time to process these feelings. So what we see here with the three of cups, you're going to be entering a time before you meet this person of celebration, of camaraderie. You'll have a, like, you'll be in a certain friend group where you'll have like a solid group of friends or companions that all kind of support each other and are everyone kind of equally, there's an equal give and take amongst all group members. You can think of horses like running with a pack of wild, like wild horses running together. It's kind of, that's what the vibe of getting right here mixed with the three of cups. And with luck is on your side, new moon in Sagittarius, new moon represents beginnings, right? So you'll start to notice that there's kind of like this new beginning with a friend group, or there's this new start with a group of friends. And with luck is on your side, it's just indicating that like this friend group is going to make you very, very lucky. And that's kind of the, the mode, the, the, the juice, I guess you could say, that's going to help you meet your future person. We see here with the King of Cups, because it's a court card, that you meet your person through this friend group or that going out with these friends. I'm noticing something of the sort where the King of Cups is turned away from this friend group right there. And if you also notice right here, the hawk is turned away from the horse person. I think that you're your person, how you meet them, they're not really noticing you at first. It's kind of like you notice them. And one of the cool things about this is that you have like this bolstering of your friend group to kind of like give you the courage and the, the gusto to kind of like meet them or talk to them. With by the book, it's interesting because I'm seeing that you guys meet in kind of like an educational setting or like in some kind of institution or group setting. So this could be Anywhere where like you have to play by the rules to like deal with the situation. So for example, you're probably not going to meet this person at say like a bar where people are being like kind of rambunctious and stuff. It's going to be more like in a situation of like a classroom or maybe like even like I want to go as far as to say you possibly could meet them even in like a library or somewhere where there's like it would be almost like inappropriate to like hit on someone. I see that you do because this is the thing. You have that sol that solid friend group in your situation where you kind of like bolster each other up and give each other courage to kind of like do anything, right? You guys have with the horse card, with the strength, it's like with this friend group, it's like your intuition's advanced or in more in tune. And because everything's very, very lucky with this friend group, you're going to feel very invincible. Like all of you together can like really accomplish anything. So you see this person and you're going to really know them but I'm seeing something about their physical appearance right off the bat real quick with the court card. With the King of Cups, I've noticed King of Cups types can oftentimes have like a bigger build or like a larger body. Um, 
in the sense that it's like muscular, I guess is the best way to put it. They're just, a, they're just like bigger guys or bigger girls, basically. This person could be like really tall and elegant if they're a female. And then if they're a male, they could be really, um, just like bigger guys, like bigger shoulders. Um, but also the thing is with King of Cups, these are like teddy bear guys, right? Like they're, they're big in stature, but they're really sensitive in nature. And with the hawk, though, I definitely sense like a fierceness about this person. That This person has kind of like a sharper edge to them and kind of has like a certain sense of style or like sharpness to their sense of style. Yeah, the one thing that's interesting is when you go and approach them immediately, something that's kind of just like come into the conversation like immediately is something from your past, a memory or a moment from your past that meant a lot to you or that meant something really important to you. And so when you're speaking with this person, they're going to kind of like bring this up and they're going to bring up kind of like something or you're going to bring up something. Um, I don't know why I'm seeing like meeting at like a grocery store for some reason for some of you, but even if you're meeting in an educational context, you might be discussing like you know, maybe you're discussing like what kind of like materials you're studying or classes you're studying, kind of like that. I can see kind of like your friends in the background, like watching you from a distance as you like approach this person. And it's kind of like they're on, they've got your back and you're kind of like coming up to talking to them. Definitely hawk people are very cool headed, cool minded. Um, there's definitely this aspect of like them being able to see the bigger picture. So they're going to be aware that your friends are kind of with you and stuff like that. Um, and they're kind of aware of the situation and they're not phased by it. They're not uncomfortable by it. They're very content to like be in this situation where they kind of like, it's almost like they see you as like, um, I don't want to say they see you as more valuable, but they, they definitely value the fact that you have this friend group. They like people who have kind of like groups around them. Anyway, you guys connect over some kind of nostalgic thing from your past. So this could be anything from like a favorite TV show to a favorite game you both played, maybe musical artists, something that's from your deep past that kind of like bonds you two together. Um, this could be like favorite movies that you watched when you were younger or something like that. And that's kind of like what bonds you two together. I definitely see the cementing block that kind of makes you kind of realize this person is for you. It's kind of like with by the book being in this educational context, um, like a lot of you, for most of you, it's really going to be, you're going to meet this person in like school or some situation like that. By the book can also indicate with the elephants right here that there's like a following the leader aspect. So it's kind of like you have to follow the rules with this person. You're following, you're in kind of some kind of system or structure. This could be a club environment, any kind of organization where there's a, a sense of rules where you have to follow these specific rules to like get along um, or that you have to kind of abide by the rules of this kind of system or structure around you. Um, and I definitely see that you both work really well within this structure and you guys become kind of like partners in like trying to like succeed through this structure, whatever that structure is. It's almost like with this practice makes perfect. This is also a card about longevity and kind of taking it step by step, right? Taking it step by step. This guy's building a pentacle one after the other, you know? Um, this can also reminds me of like studying, like when you're in school and you have to, you know, you take one class, pass it, then you go to the next class, the next class, the next class, and you're kind of going through that, that kind of like system or, or that kind of systematic approach. Let's see, with a time for healing, it's interesting because with the King of Cups here, this person is a healer. So it's almost like you held on to this kind of wound or this the reason this wound happened to you and that you're putting off healing it. And then we were, well, you're kind of like, every time you go to try to heal it yourself, it kind of like is not working that well for you. And you, you're gonna have this situation, this tug of war in this point of your life where you have this wound that you're trying to heal. And the thing is, you're going to have this group of friends that you've met, right? Or that you're meeting. And they're going to kind of try to pull you out and want you to go socialize, want you to get you out of the house, want to get you away from kind of dwelling in this kind of pain. And that's really a good thing because what we see here is that they pull you into this lucky activity with luck is on your side here, new moon in Sagittarius. You get this whole new kind of cur courage that you, that's coming up, right? You're running with your horse pack and, uh, and then you meet this person. Um, and it's almost like this group gives you the courage to kind of, and also the knowledge to know who this person is with the horse card, with that crescent moon and the, um, third eye right there. I'm definitely seeing that, uh, kind of like 
your, your third, your, your psychic abilities will be synced up with the moon I'm seeing, but at the same time though, you're have, you're going to have awareness and know who this person is basically. And you're going to, you're going to be the one to approach them. Yeah, it's kind of a little bit of an opposites attract thing here because we have an earth sign and an air sign. And if you literally look at these triangles, the thing that, that's in common with them is they both have a line through them, but they're in opposite directions. So you can kind of like think about that. You guys are going to have some commonalities, especially with your past and how you grew up. There's going to be a lot of commonalities. You'll feel like you came from some, this person's going to feel like they came from somewhere that's like felt like home to you or felt like somewhere where you grew up, they're going to have a lot of similarities like that, that are kind of similar to your like home environment. And you're going to work really well with them, like together with them, like whatever this institution is, whatever projects you're doing in this kind of group environment, um, they are kind of working really well with you in those projects. And you guys can kind of team up and build step by step into the future. And that kind of is a little blueprint into the future of your connection with this partner, this person that you're... Um, you're curious about, right? Like the, the, when you meet this person, it's like, that's how you're going to build a step-by-step -step when like in the future with them. Yeah. A time for healing. It's interesting. You might recognize a beginning of this with the, the past where you guys go into the past and you kind of like go into past situations with each other, but a time for healing is really pointing out that like looking back at different things with this person is going to be the most healing thing possible. It's almost like you were trying to look back and work on your own stuff but it was almost impossible to do that. So you just kind of gave into this socialization, this friend group and kind of put that on the back burner. And what we're seeing is that's a good thing because then you later, you heal it over here with this looking into the past and kind of with the King of Cups energy, it's like this healer. Think of like a big teddy bear, kind of like a guy that's like, almost like tough and sharp on the outside, but a sensitive, kind of sensitive person or sensitive soul on the inside. Yeah, they do just to reiterate, they are both looking away from you at first or away from this friend group. So they're basically minding their own business, doing their own thing. And I definitely see that you are interested in them. Like you're the one who's like, oh, wow, they look kind of hot or they look kind of interesting. And your friends are probably like, go talk to them, go talk to them, <laughs> you know, like, and so they kind of urge you on and you, and because you're feeling like high on luck, right? We have luck is on your side, new moon and Sagittarius. This is just kind of like, it's really when you feel like nothing bad can happen to you, like everything's going so well anyway, it's like, it doesn't matter. Like whatever I do is going to touch, like whatever I touch is going to turn to gold. So you're really in that like beautiful place of like, you're on that, you're in the flow, I guess is what you could call it. Some people call it the flow, right? And you're just kind of like in it. And so when you talk to this person, you have that kind of confidence, you have that kind of, uh, in a sense, like you have this little bit of charisma about you, which I think is, um, like maybe a little bit different than you experience yourself in the past, but there's definitely this sense of like charm that comes across when you kind of meet this person. Very cool. All right. Well, that was your reading. Um, if you like that reading, you can like or comment below. If you really like this reading, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Uh, we are always welcoming more subscribers here on Cody Tarot, so it'd be lovely to have you. With that said, we're going to move on to group two with the Aragonite. Hey, group two. This is if you picked the um, Aragonite cluster. So very cool. Um, I'm, I want to say these are called star clusters or aragonite star clusters, but I'm not sure. If you know what these are called in the comments, feel free to comment that. Um, let's see. Okay, so first we have nothing will come of the situation. Void, of course, mood. These are oracle cards, by the way. Nothing will come of the situation. Void, of course, mood and round and round. Um, and then we have your other oracle cards. I'm going to be drawing, I'm shuffling the tarot cards. We have scorpion and we have... Tarantula, very cool. And then I'm going to be shuffling the tarot cards on camera today. So I like to, uh, oh, I like to kind of pre-draw the Oracle cards to save time in this, in the reading, you know, that way it's, Other cards, two more cards for pile two. Okay. 
And your other two cards are Ace of Pentacles reversed and Five of Pentacles upright. Okay, so let's get into your reading. This reading took somewhat of a dark turn. So it's going to be one of those readings where if, if you're not resonating, it's probably not going to be your pile. But if you do resonate, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to feel it for this one. Um, okay, so we have you as the scorpion over here and them as the tarantula, your person. So how and when you'll meet. So one thing that's going to happen is there's something with your resources or your finances. Um, there's almost going to be a new beginning, financial new opportunity that you're going to kind of bet on. If you think of Ace of Pentacles upright, to me, it can represent kind of like winning a gamble or winning a, a bet, basically, or being given kind of like a, a sum of money out of nowhere, you know? And what we're seeing is you're kind of relying on this money that's going to come out of nowhere and you actually don't get it. And that's the thing. It's interesting because it puts you into a place where you're kind of like, it's almost like, and it might not even be money, it could be something else, but it's almost like you have to lose something in order to meet your person. And I know that's kind of like tough and it seems kind of uh, crappy, but it's like, it works out in the end actually. Um, but it looks like this is kind of like a repeating pattern for you um, is what I'm seeing is that kind of like um, betting on something working out and then finding out like, oh my gosh, and then it doesn't work out, right? And then you kind of are left out on the cold and you have to start from scratch and build something up from from new, right? So we have like three cards reiterating this. We have nothing will come in this situation and the Ace of Pentacles reverse. So it's just basically saying that like, there is this element of being thrown back on your, throwing, thrown back down on the ground, you know? And it's like you've been doing this for a while. Like you have, you know, you keep getting back up and then you get thrown down and then you keep getting back up. And so in this period, when you're out in the cold, it's actually, this is you and your person. You meet them kind of early in this scenario, but, um, you actually meet them when you're kind of down on your luck. So there's a, there's a situation where you lose something. Um, and this can go for different people of like, I mean, this could be not to like scare you or anything, but this could be any kind of disaster where you maybe have like a uh, injury or disability, nothing life threatening or anything like that, but it like weakens you or maybe you can't work for a while because you're on this disability or maybe you've had some kind of like, um, Maybe you, you got, you know, maybe all of a sudden you started getting depressed or something and then you came down with depression and then basically because of that depression, you were kind of thrown back out of your normal day-to-day -day activities, right? Whatever this disability or thing that is coming that is, that is breaking you down, it's almost like you are banking on something working out and then this thing does not work out in the end. And it's like nothing will come of this situation. Basically tells that you're going to meet this person in a time where like a lot of things in your life are not really working out. Like with a void of course moon, this is just kind of like, a, it's not the right time to like make big moves. Basically, it's kind of like the time to kind of like stand still and kind of like recuperate and not really do anything too much. But the interesting thing is you do meet this person because you're thrown into their like social stratum is, is basically what I'm trying to say. Um, you're thrown into their environment. This person is also down on their luck and you're actually normally you wouldn't be in this environment or your, your losses aren't like this big of a loss or something, but the, the, you're actually thrown into the same environment with them and you're both kind of like down on your luck basically. And the interesting thing is through this connection, we also have the fact that both of you are kind of like these insect creatures and we also have fire symbols right here. Those mean two things. First of all, with the fact that you're both being insects, I'm first of all, I'm thinking of cockroaches and the fact that they survive through any catastrophe. No matter what the catastrophe is, they survive through it. So this is a pile where you find out your true grit and like how you are, as, how real you are with each other as far as like, the fact that you both can survive anything, even though you're both down on your luck, you realize how resilient and strong the other person is. And it's almost like you guys build each other's strength up. I'm, I'm surprised I didn't get the strength card in this reading. But the thing is, is you work these things out with round and round. It's almost like, 
It's almost like with round and round, I'm seeing these things happening again and again to either you or them. There's some kind of repeating pattern where they kind of, you bet on something and then you lose something. But in this losing place, right, you meet this person and you kind of like build each other up and heal each other. With the high priestess here, we have kind of the peak of the connection. This is just indicating that both of you are really strengthening your intuition. You're really strengthening your intuition and realizing that like, you're both more than meets the eye. You're very like passionate individuals, both of you, but I'm definitely seeing that like, there's this, there's this element of like intuition that's coming into play, the fact that you guys meet each other. That's how you kind of know that you've met your person is kind of this synergy of like intuition. So, and also with the, the black, the dark pillar and the light pillar, this is kind of like taking into account the, the dark and the light sides of nature and like existence. Um, and this can be like, sometimes this high priestess card, if it's like paired with the hermit or something, can represent the dark and the light within yourself. But then also the dark and the light can also be represented by like outside factors as well. The thing is with it being the high priestess and say it being like, you know, the moon card or something, this dark and light nature is kind of like representing kind of like how your dark and light natures affect your reality. And so when you meet this other person, this could be a very like twin flamey type of situation because we both have two fire signs. There's a lot of similarities here. Um, and yeah, it's interesting. I can see that you actually have kind of like a kick or a bite to your personality. Like you kind of have like a fierceness to your personality where your other person kind of looks scary, but they're actually really kind of like quite harmless. They kind of look kind of like intimidating, but they're quite like gentle, I guess. Tarantulas are not really that dangerous, I guess you could say, where scorpions could actually sting you, you know? Um, but with this high priestess, you guys get this like beautiful intuitive kind of like connection with each other and you build off of it. You see the light and dark sides of things. You see the the kind of the idea of losing and winning and seeing how they're both part of the same coin, how maybe sometimes when you're losing, like it's just a matter of time before you win. And sometimes when you're winning, it's just a matter of time before you lose. And that balance back and forth between the two, that kind of dialectic or that dichotomy of kind of going back and forth. You can think of waves in the ocean, which I don't know if you knew this. I barely knew this a while ago, but the high priestess, there's like an ocean behind her. There's like a tapestry and behind her, there's like water behind these pillars and stuff. Um, and it's just about like the fact that it some your you know your wave comes in, your wave goes out. And it's kind of just saying that like, there's certain times where you'll be down on your luck and there's certain times where you'll be up on your luck. And that's kind of what round and round is kind of representing. It's also similar to like the wheel of fortune, how there's kind of like an evolution in the ups and downs. And it's kind of like through meeting this person, you realize the intuitive moment of that and how to navigate those waves. You know, almost like a surfer navigates the beach or the ocean when he's like, you know, at some points he's like laying down on the board waiting for that wave. And then when the right wave comes, he can stand up and he can ride that wave and like have a blast, right? So there's kind of like this element of like learning how to have the innate gambler within you, like knowing the exact time to like make those moves or kind of like make a, um, a specific type of advancement and then kind of like win out on that because you have the knowledge with the high priestess, you have that kind of intuitive sense to move forward or not move forward. We see here with the three of cups, this leads to kind of like a celebration or a good time. And this is something where it's kind of like, the reason it's taking this long to kind of like describe meeting your person when you actually meet them over here is because it's all about the understanding that you've met this person. There could be many people that you meet when you're down on your luck, right? There could be many people that you meet when you're down on your dumps, you've tried to throw this gamble in and then you've lost the gamble, right? And you're down, you're, you're down on the dumps, you know, maybe you try to do one thing and then it failed and then it's like okay nothing's coming of this so you've probably met a lot of people down in this moment the difference is and the reason this these cards are pointing out right here is this person ex like expands your intuition that's the key difference between them and other people is this person is kind of like the one that's expanding your intuition expanding that understanding of the dialectic and the waves going back and forth and this is one of the things you guys are going to have a celebration together Basically, through your activities, you're going to have kind of this moment of celebration. This card's actually, I know it's the Three of Cups, but it's being read more like the um, Four of Wands, basically, where it's like a celebration or a, like a good time. And it's kind of representing this kind of like 
cheerful moment where you both are kind of like, whoa, we did it. How do we do that? Wow, I'm on top of things. Like I normally wouldn't have gotten that thing or I would have lost that thing or I wouldn't have gotten that thing. And you realize with round and round, round and round, it's about going round and round the same problems again, which is what we're seeing here with this nature of kind of like, you know, betting and losing and stuff like that. But with round and round, we're definitely seeing this element of like you breaking out of that mold, you know? And this can be anything from starting to make bets on things that are more reliable, or it could be starting to make the right bets in different areas. Um, and it's interesting, we have a whole metaphor of a gambler here, but it doesn't have to be directly with like gambling. Like you might not actually be going to a casino and gambling your money, but it could deal with like other things in your life, you know? Like maybe you are, you know, you're trying to manage two jobs and you quit one job to try to like make it work at another job or whatever, but then that job falls through. So it could be any kind of thing that like makes you down on your luck. And it's kind of like this whole idea or psychology of kind of making bets and being down on your luck and not making the correct bet, but being thrown into situations where you kind of have to bet all the time or like something like that. You know, it's kind of this reoccurring issue, but you break out of it and there's this time of celebration, right? It's this time of like really beautiful joy. But the thing is, is you both know that the waves go in and out, right? So it's not just the celebration of winning the bet that you're, you're both bet on and that you're you both with synced up with your intuition and winning that moment and having the celebration for that moment. It's afterwards, right? We have the six of swords here and this kind of looks like a sad card. She's kind of sad. She, this guy's ferrying her across the river, you know, or something. And then we have these swords here, right? And this just indicates that like it's the, these, the swords are kind of weighing down the boat. It just indicates that there's this aspect of, you know, what goes up must come down. It's just like the wheel of fortune. And when you're up, it's like, this person is also the type of person with the intuition and the waves. You know there's not a wave coming, so you get back down your board and you move forward slowly and surely. You know, you take that moment to not, uh, I guess gamble again or not like go through the same up and downs or feel bad or, or anything, but it's like, it's a lot better. This six of swords is a lot better than this five of pentacles. And if you think about it, five goes to six. It's like a sequential numbering system. So where it's like the rapid change and the, the, the kind of ups and downs that you're kind of used to and like the, the rapid kind of extremes with the six, it's all about like journeying forth and continuing on and forward momentum. Now we don't have the six of wands here and that's just basically saying that it's not like you're moving in the victorious periods, but you're moving in the periods where you're more down on your luck. So it basically means there's just a time where you're in life and you're moving forward, but there's not really much like ups and downs, basically, because you're in kind of like a down, you're in a like stagnant time, right? That, back to this void, of course, moon. That's kind of what the key is right here, where nothing will come in this situation. You're for some reason, you just have these times in your life where it's not appropriate to make a certain gamble. It's not appropriate to make a certain move. And through having this intuitive connection with your person, you understand that. So this, you can kind of think of this card as like, you know, the thing is she's sad, right? Because she can't make any kind of big moves in her life, but they're still moving forward. And they're moving forward like with direction, right? They're not just like kind of stuck in the snow, <laughs> you know, with injuries and stuff, you know, like they're not, they haven't been like blasted down, but you're still moving forward. And the thing is, is you realize there's this cycling pattern where you move forward, slow and steady kind of wins the race. And then when it's the right time, you make the gamble and you have the celebration and the winds start coming. And this round and round starts to feel less like a curse and more like a blessing. And that's kind of the beautiful thing when you meet your person and kind of like how you know that this is your person is because they will help you with those ups and downs. They will get you more in tune with your intuition so you know how to make the right moves, when to make the right moves. And um, it does really work out for you guys in the end. So yeah, um, I think that's about it. Um, yeah, if you uh, like that reading, you can like or comment below. Uh, if you really like this reading, feel free to subscribe to my channel. We're always welcoming new subscribers here at Cody Tarot. With that said, I enjoyed reading for you. And yeah, we're going to move on to group three with the Amethyst. Hey, group three, this is if you picked the um, Amethyst cluster. Pretty like geode Amethyst. Okay, so... Let's get into your reading. So I, for this reading, I pre-drew the Oracle cards for this pile, and then I'm gonna draw the shuffle and draw the tarot cards on camera. 
So the cards that flipped up upright, I like to start the reading off with those. Um, we have bring love into the situation, new moon in Aquarius, and expect powerful change, new moon eclipse. Um, for most of the other piles, I haven't been really reading these as like timing, but for this pile, I'm kind of called to for some reason. So I just want to point that out, that there could be a chance that you might meet your person on a new moon eclipse or specifically if there is, I don't, I don't know too much about the planets and stuff right now, but if there's a new moon eclipse in Aquarius, that would be a per that would be a great time to meet your person or a very lucky time to meet your person. Um, yeah, there's something about a new moon eclipse or new moon in Aquarius that's coming through for this pile particularly. Um, okay, so let's get into your reading. Let's flip over the rest of your cards. For your Oracle card, we have community. And for your, um, ooh, camel, fun. Okay, so I, I don't get this card often. So we have for the animal Oracle cards, we have camel and we have fire ant. Very cool. Okay, let's shuffle your cards and we'll get out the rest of your reading. I feel like I need to do a classic. Some classic shuffling. Okay, let's see. I did see the Ace of Swords in reverse. Which to me is just indicating that maybe you guys don't have a lot of clarity on this subject. Um, I don't know, maybe you've watched other pick a cards and you're just trying to figure it out and maybe you haven't found too much, too many like solid answers or something. Or you're still, you're just still a little confused even after knowing this kind of like information. Uh, well, hopefully we can keep things clear for you in this reading so you can have like a good understanding of what's going to happen when you meet your person. Okay, the cards that flipped upright are the Chariot and Justice, two major arcana. And we also have Expect Powerful Change. So this is some big energy here so far. Uh, let's flip over the rest of your tarot cards. We have the Ten of Pentacles reversed, the Two of Swords reversed, and the Ten of Swords reversed. Okay, so for your pile, we kind of have something of a situation of kind of like a, a personal dilemma that needs to be resolved before your person comes into play. Um, yeah, what I'm seeing here um, is that with the, the Two of Swords reverse and the Ten of Pentacles reverse and the um, Ten of Swords reverse is you're, you will be coming into a time in your life, if you're already aware of this issue, um, then you'll know what I'm talking about, but if this issue might come up later or it might be building to this kind of issue, so you might be already be recognizing it, but um, it's gonna build to more of like a climactic moment. And the issue is basically like with the 10 of um, pentacles right here representing kind of like, this can represent like larger groups of family and stuff like that. But with community, this is representing any kind of like group or community in your current environment. Um, this could be from family to relatives, to like friends, to anyone who feels like you're a big part of the community. This could also be work associates. Like if you're a part of a working team and you have these work associates, whatever the case may be, it's, there's a, there's like a, it's kind of like a balancing thing. Like the thing, but it's almost like you have to choose or you're dealing with some kind of duality between two things. Um, it's interesting. Uh, the last the last group dealt with duality as well, but you're dealing with duality is a little bit different, your situation. Um, so I feel like for you on one hand, you feel like it's good to be a part of the group. It's good to, um, you know, it's almost like you want to commit yourself to this group. They, they really stand for things that you value. Um, they stand for things that are like important to you. 
Um, you want to commit yourself to them. You want to be a more active member. But on the flip side, we're seeing that with this, the 10 of swords right here and it being in reverse, it's kind of like they're weighing you down a little bit, especially in the mental sphere. It's like on one hand, you really value this group and you like to be a part of them. But on the other hand, it's kind of like if you look at these like swords and this guy's back, think of this as all the thoughts and the negative vibrations you're picking up from the people in this kind of community. And that's kind of the thing is like, do you just deal with the group, which is kind of bringing you kind of these negative vibrations, or do you go over here and you kind of be alone where all these swords can kind of fall back out of your back and you can kind of like feel free and like free in yourself. Now it's interesting because what I'm seeing is that like, it's going to be hard to work through these things on your own, but it's also going to be hard to work through these things with the group. And that's why we have the chariot over here. Um, because a lot of this, how and when you'll meet your person is based on this kind of like sort of breakthrough that you're going to have. You know, we have two swords cards in this situation and we also have a sword in the justice card, right? And um, it's interesting. It's almost like with the two swords here, it's like you're weighing two options in your, your head, right? We're weighing the two alternatives, right? And with the 10 of swords right here, this is just indicating all the different thoughts. Think of the swords as different thoughts, all the different thoughts of the people around you kind of like affecting you and weighing you down. I wouldn't be surprised if you're somewhat introverted as a person. Um, but also with the Justice card, if you look at her over here in the final moment, right, she only has one sword, one clarifying thought. And like I said in the beginning of the reading, I saw the Ace of Swords reversed, which just means that there's a lot of like, you're not really clear on this situation. And so hopefully we can like clear that up with this reading and stuff. Um, with the, the Justice card upright with the sword, it's like you finally have the clarity, you finally have the go ahead, you're clear and you know what's going on, right? And with the scales and the balance, you're going to come to a balance point. And with that's kind of how you meet your person, basically, because it's kind of like you're balancing yourself out as well as like balancing out these external factors. So one of the key answers to this situation, we have bring love into the situation and the chariot. And we also have expect powerful change right below bring love into the situation. So that's a really key indicator that you're going to go through a big transformation, especially with the chariot and the justice card. You're going to go through a really big transformation. Um, so the thing is how to balance these things out. It's all clued into the chariot card. So um, specifically with the water, the cards that are associated with the water signs, like the chariot, the high priestess, um, even the moon and the death card, there is elements of like in the kind of, um, traditional artwork, there's elements of black and white intertwined in the cards, right? On the high priestess, you have the black and white pillars on the chariot, you have the black and white sphinx. And on the death card, you have the white rose and the black flag, right? Um, the thing is with this card, how the duality represents itself in this card is with these two sphinxes, he has to get them to work in the same direction. They're pointing in opposite directions, but as the head of the chariot, he has to get them pushed in the same direction in order to make his, like, accomplish his goals. So really think about this as like a balancing act. It's a balancing act between your alone time and kind of recharging and then part of like being in the group. So don't think of it as such a black or white thing. Like I have to be a part of this group or I have to be away from this group, right? There is this, this element of balance, right? And it's going to include using one and the other together. So what we're seeing here is bringing in some of your introverted thoughts and your introverted experiences out and putting those and sharing those with the group and also bringing some of the things that the group is doing and thinking about those in your introverted moments. That's really going to get kind of like this synergy of like correlation and get this chariot card moving. And, you know, because we want these two sphinxes to work together and to move and create that movement, right? That's really the powerful change that's coming once this whole thing can be accomplished, because I see right now you have this kind of battle between introvert and extrovert. Basically, you really value the people you're around and like how much you love them. And then on the other hand, you're like, man, they give me so much like stress or anxiety. You know, it's like, how can I, you know, how am I weighing this out? It's almost like it's a lose-lose situation, you know? Um, 
What I'm saying is with this, you'll have be able to have your cake and eat it too, basically, you know? With the community card, this is where you're meeting your person, right? Community is just showing that like, once you develop this kind of double-sided nature to your character, right? It makes you better able to function within communities, whatever community you wanna be a part of, and even other communities where you can like travel through different other communities, right? Um, you're going to meet your person in this kind of community that you value, you know, and they're going to kind of see you in a different way than they have been seeing you before. And that's kind of interesting how this happens because fire ants, one of the things about this person is they're a really hard worker and they're a really team player, right? They really value that community environment and they really value working together with a group. We see here with, um, camel. Oh, one other thing that I forgot. Um, with this, when you're trying to balance your introverted and extroverted side and you're bringing your introverted thoughts into the external environment and bringing your external environment into the introverted thoughts, um, bring love into the situation is going to be really key when you're going to deal with the group, right? If you have the kind of personality where you don't show your love too much with the group, um, one of the things that's being like suggested here is that in that your introverted time when you're like by yourself and you're feeling that that amount of like self-care and relaxation you're like finally I'm alone it's like what are you like doing about what do, what what do you do for yourself when you're alone how come you're like I'm seeing that for 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 you in particular when you're by yourself you're very loving you're very caring and in a way you're very intuitive you think about camels they can go through the whole desert and they have these water humps on their back right and they can live off their own water for quite a while um and it's interesting you kind of live off your own intuitive nature how can that in introverted part of you that kind of powers yourself, how can you use that to help power the community? And that's kind of where it's to asking you to think about love and bringing that love into the situation where you're bringing that love that you give to yourself when you're by yourself and bringing that into the community and sharing that with the community and bringing that love in and sharing that love in an outward way with the people around you. That's what attracts this person to you. Just so you know, this person's going to be a pretty hard worker. They might have a little kick to their personality uh, because fire ants do have the tendency to kind of like they can you know they can bite and it's kind of like a thing like that they do have a little bit of a kick to their personality a little bit of spiciness but I'm definitely seeing that you'll be able to handle that and with the justice card wrapping it all up here when you meet your person with the justice card they're just going to add that extra balance right it's almost like you have to balance yourself out before that other person can come into your life right because this other person I'm seeing is already pretty balanced. They might be a very hard worker, very like focused on the community, but they're also very balanced in the sense that like, even though they're very outwardly focused, they also know how to spend their own alone time to themselves. It's also something that for some of you, you're going to be showing them how to make these fluid transitions between this duality between alone time and extroverted time, basically. Um, and kind of like showing them how that is kind of working. Once again, just like the other pile, we have the, um, two of swords with the moon card and the water behind the waves and the ocean, uh, that can represent kind of the going and the back and forth between two different things, you know, kind of moving towards it and then back away from it. And what we're seeing here, if you're nervous about this transition, or if this sounds very abstract and almost like complicated to you, what we're seeing here with the camel card is with this moon in the background, this blue moon, I'm taking this as your guides. And I think that your guides um, or your, your angels or your guides, they're definitely very like... Um, is the right word Neptune, like Neptunian? Is that even a word? I feel like a lot of your guides, like, <laughs> just bear with me here. I feel like they hang out on Neptune, you know? And they're kind of like very aware of like your life from like that far away planet. They kind of like hang out there and they like watch over you and they're giving you like, they're helping you. They're sending that planet to vibe with you. So with new moon in Aquarius, expect powerful change. Also look out for situations with Neptune in the sky. If like there's certain times where like Neptune's lining up with the moon or anything like that. I definitely see that like celestial events could trigger this kind of powerful change in you, could trigger this kind of um, transformation and kind of get that moving in the correct direction. Yeah, and remember, the key is like bringing love into the situation, the love that you feel on your own, and then bringing the love from the community into the situation when you're alone. It's not all just absorbing pain from your community, and it's not all just like 
um, bringing out and kind of like trying to fit in with the community and adapt to their needs, right? You're allowed to, to like kind of tell the community or dictate to the community how you want that those loving connections to go. And you're allowed to take loving connections from the community and bring them to yourself. So bringing that love and keeping that love in the fluid um, paths within the situation is really going to help as well. Uh, let's see. I think that's about it. This reading was interestingly not very much about your person, but your person, I just want to let you know, is very hardworking. With the two um, triangles right there, the two fire signs, um, your person is... Um, going to be very simpatico with you. I definitely see you guys are going to have a lot in common to talk about, a lot of like things that are going to be like similar in nature to each other. And remember, this is like only the beginning. The fact that your person is like not being mentioned so much in the reading or the way you guys meet, and it's more of like the transformation beforehand, um, that this happens in these types of readings, especially with how and when. Sometimes the transformation needs to take place before you can actually uh, meet your person or get in touch with your person because it's almost like you have to go through these things on your own before you meet your person. But with the Justice card um, upright, this is definitely like good karma. Like the fact that like if you work through this, you're definitely going to get a lot of good karma from this. With the Chariot card, you're going to get a lot of motion and movement. Expect powerful change is so true here because I think I see a lot of good positive things happening to you in rapid succession after you create this kind of balance, right? Um, you know, it's just about bringing, you know, a little bit from one area into the next area and kind of like balancing out that way, you know? Remember, the chariot, to create forward momentum, right, you have to have kind of like the yin and the yang. So with that said, I'm going to end your reading there. Um, if you like that reading, you can like or comment below. If you really like this reading, you can feel free to subscribe to my channel. Um, we're always welcoming new subscribers here. With that said, I really enjoyed reading for you guys today. And we're going to move on to group four with the Azerite. Hey, group four. This is if you picked the... Um, Azurite right here. It's really like deep indigo stone. So let's get into your reading. So for today's reading, I pre-drew the oracle cards for you all. And um, we have all the, the ones that flipped up upright was the stingray, which is representing you here. And so uh, if for some reason when I flipped this card upright or this card flipped up upright when I was shuffling, all the cards fell everywhere. Like they fell on the floor, they fell on the table, like it was like an explosion from the deck. So there is some like intense energy here. So we'll see what that is represented with the reading. And then let's flip over your other cards and then I will get into shuffling the tarot cards on camera. So your other, your Moonology card is communication is key. We have a change in the wind. And we have whale. Okay. So let's shuffle your tarot cards and we'll draw some tarot cards and we'll get um, the our information for how you and your person will meet. reversed, three of wands reversed, the eight of pentacles upright, we'll draw the other ones. Okay, so let's get into your rest of your tarot cards. We have your Eight of Pentacles upright. We have the Three of Swords in reverse, the Page of Cups in reverse, the Three of Wands in reverse, and the Four of Wands in reverse. 
Okay, so this is quite interesting of a reading. Um, yeah, there is, there's a few things here. So first of all, we see you on one hand where you are focused on your own spiritual development. With Sting right here, I'm noticing, first of all, these um, colors right here of the chakras. And I'm definitely seeing you focused on your own development. And with the Eight of Pentacles right here, you're slowly building steadily and surely on your spiritual development, your spiritual um, advancements in your life. And you're trying to like um, kind of create some like peace and serenity. And you're kind of, the way I'm seeing it here is like, with this guy working on the pentacles mixed with the stingray, it's like you're working and building up through the different chakras one by one as you kind of advance, right? Um, and what I'm seeing here with the stingray is that this has kind of like been preoccupying most of your time, you know? But every once in a while, it's almost like you're going along your daily life and we have this three of swords in reverse situation where you have some kind of trauma or disappointment, um, and it's like, you don't know how to get rid of it. You don't know how to deal with it. And it's like, you've been doing so well in your spiritual path. And it's like, right before you meet your person, you know, or kind of like, the interesting thing is here is it's like, you've always known your person. It's hard to kind of explain this, but it's, it's a very internal connection. So like I had a lot of reverse cards and it confused me at the beginning of this reading, but I realized it basically just means that a lot of this connection is in your mind. And it's in the other person's mind. Um, so this is very much a situation of like psychic connection over like a great distance. Um, so basically you're working on your spiritual self and um, you kind of, whenever you have like an issue like this, it's almost like with Page of Cups reversed, it's almost like you're communicating with, um, with this fish right here. It's like you're communicating with um, either spirits or... Um, any kind of like, even like an animal totem or anything along those lines where you're like communicating with angels or guides or speaking out to the universe and looking for an answer, but you're doing it kind of in your head. Like whatever you're thinking in your head, um, if you have a painful situation that's in your mind, right, it's reversed too, so it's in your mind. The fact that this, you're kind of like communicating with these someone in your head like you're kind of like why is this like this basically a lot of this looks like overthinking it can like on a most basic scale it can look like a lot of overthinking or communicating with yourself but what we see here with the whale person and keep in mind both of these people are water signs so there is a lot of like intuitive empathetic um not that you guys would be water signs but the connection has like a very watery component to it um and this whale person is very much aware of the stingray person, but the stingray person's not really aware of the whale. You can think of this kind of situation like in the ocean, how whales are swimming above, like kind of in the middle of the ocean. They kind of are these huge creatures that kind of like, technically a whale can be like seen by any anyone and anywhere, but the stingray, interestingly enough, is a bottom, I'm seeing him as like a bottom feeder or someone who like surfaces the, the bottom floor of the ocean. So it's like the stingray can't like, if they just looked up, they'd see the whale, but the whale's kind of always been there. So this is one of those situations where your person's kind of like always been around, you know, or your person's kind of like, even if you haven't met them yet, or you haven't been dealing with this yet, because I'm also seeing as you advance spiritually in your connection, that's what kind of attracts this person to you. But like when you start to feel these little pains or traumas or any kind of thing where you're like worried about any kind of heartbreak or anything like that, you start speaking to yourself and it's almost like you're doing this in a very spiritual context. So it looks like you've been practicing or working with your spiritual abilities for quite some time, or you have been before you meet this person. There is an element that you're like, as you're communicating with yourself and trying to be kind to yourself and nice to yourself, you're speaking to yourself, but really this person is kind of like hearing you. And the best way I can put this is like, this is kind of like a connection that's in the mind. Um, it's almost like this person's aware of like how you're communicating on your inside. This person, this whale person is going to be extremely intuitive, extremely psychic. They're going to be able to kind of like have the ability to almost like read your thoughts um, is what I'm seeing here. And they're very much aware of this connection with you. Um, yeah, they're almost watching you from afar. And it's interesting because as you communicate with this uh, Page of Cups energy in reverse, it's like they're kind of hearing it as well. 
yeah, we see here that like it's interesting. I'm getting, this is almost like a uh, kind of like how is the connection playing out or what does this person want or their intentions? It's kind of like a different kind of reading coming through than the the one that was asked. Um, but I'm I'm. It's interesting. This person is sending you positive thoughts like constantly when they hear these echoes of your mind, basically. They hear these kind of echoes or problems that you're going through. And with a change in the wind, I always think of like the wind element is like what connects our minds to each other, right? It's like logic and communication. We have communication is key right here. But it's also the wind element is kind of what bridges our connection psychically between us. Um, the air, the air basically itself, because the air covers like the whole earth and we're constantly surrounded by the air all the time. It's like the ocean can only go so far. The earth can only go so far. You know, fire is like the sun kind of shines only on half the earth at any given time. Right. But the wind, the air is everywhere all at once. It's the, what, the one thing that can kind of, kind of like connect us like that. So the fact that we have a change in the wind, the thing is, is like, the fact that you're meeting your person is because this connection is happening. You two are going to be drawn together. The reason why it's being brought to my attention like this is because it's trying to point out that like when you start doing these things, it's almost like you'll know the per your person is aware of you or thinking about you or you're like connected to them over a, a distance, right? When you start complaining or to yourself or like asking yourself for help or asking the universe for help, you could even have asking the universe or even if you have a pet or something, you might be thinking you're communicating with your cat or your dog or like, com like confessing things to them like that are going on in your life and like using them as a therapist or something <laughs> like with the fish in the cup, I'm seeing an animal companion, but for some of you, but um, basically you're like venting out these frustrations, right? but you're doing it privately. You're not like sharing them with anyone. And I don't know if um, this actually is a positive thing in a sense, because what it's happening is it's being transferred. Like you can think of it being transferred through the wind or through the air. And then it's received by this whale person, right? And this whale person's aware they're receiving your energy. The thing is the whale person is going to send you back like energy. Like they're when they're, when you, when you, when their energy gets sent to them, um, it's like it's a pause or a break in their daily life. Like they feel like they can relax so they can have like a time out and they don't have to stress as much. They can have a time out just listening to your problems. And that's kind of how when you guys meet in the 3D, when you meet in kind of like real life, right? With communication is key. Your communication, it's not that the communication is key, like, oh, you're bad communicators, you need to learn how to communicate better. It's communication is key in the fact that like your communication unlocks the true abilities of the other person. The fact that you are venting or sharing with this person is what unlocks their happiness, you know, and vice versa. Now, this person with the four of wands, the thing is all these reverse cards, all they indicate is that this is happening in the mind, right? They don't indicate like a negative or an opposite version. It just happens that it's acting, acting and happening in the mind. And this whale person is sending you these celebratory, like marriage, twin flame, happy vibes, through the connection, through the wind, back to you. So you'll notice, um, you're kind. Of, that's the thing. So you'll notice when you're in this position where you're kind of like dealing with the pains or the hurts, and you're sending them off to the universe. You'll notice almost immediately you'll start to feel better. Where before, if you would have talked to yourself this way or something, you would have just ruminated and constantly been going around your head like in circles. All of a sudden, you'll realize as you're communicating with yourself, you'll start to feel instantly better. You'll start to get positive vibes of like, whoa, I feel better now, or I feel more content now, or I feel like it was just like it was just the weight was just lifted off me. Almost as if you finally have communicated with like an angel or something. And this angel has been like plucking your worries out of your head, right? But really what's happening is this person sending back these vibes, sending back these vibrations, these positive vibrations vibrations towards you. And that's kind of how you're meeting your person. You're meeting them in the, the mental connection, basically. I don't know how better to describe it. Um, it's basically like you're meeting them in the mind. You're meeting them through a psychic connection through each other. And it's kind of like it's pulling you closer and closer. The more you communicate with them in the mind, the closer they get to you, the closer they come to you, right? And you'll know this it's interesting. You'll know that they're close because instead of just communicating and sharing your thoughts with yourself, when you meet this person in the 3D, you will start to share your thoughts with them. Like 
you'll have a moment where a thought bubbles up and you'll get so comfortable that you'll start sharing your inner problems with them. And the thing is, is when they hear those inner problems, they're just going to send that positivity right back and it's going to feel so familiar. It's going to feel like, how do I put this? It's going to feel exactly how it would feel in your mind when you would communicate and ruminate to yourself and you'd get that positivity back in your mind, but it's going to be like 10 times more powerful, 10 times stronger, because as much as we'd like to think that this wind um, ability can like make a true connection between people, it's so much better in the 3D. Meeting in the 3D can be so much better to like phys physicalize that union, brings those, those feelings of yearning and kind of like... Um, longing into like sublimation so you can like actually feel what a real connection is in the three in the face-to-face -face 3d world right wow so that is how you meet your person it's quite interesting because a lot of the connection happens in the mind right your communication is what unlocks each other so i know that after you guys meet and after you have a, your connection with each other a lot of your like ability to like heal and feel free with each other is constant communication like sharing problems sharing and then bouncing back positivity you know and i definitely think that this whale person is also going to learn from all of your spiritual understandings that you've been accumulating so far it's interesting even though they have this ability to kind of like send you these vibrations or send you these positive vibes and they're kind of like it's interesting they could be trying to manifest you on their end un un unbeknownst to them they're sending you positive vibes in relation to you sending out the kind of like uh the kind of query or the question or the rumination of your problems to them you know so yeah, they're definitely going to learn from you. So I would say keep building up your spiritual abilities, keep building up your spiritual sense and working on your chakras. I'm seeing the chakras coming through strongly. So if you're working on activating all your chakras, that's probably a good thing. Keep it going. Um, yeah, that was your reading. So if you uh, like the reading, you can like or comment below. If you really like this reading, feel free to subscribe to my channel. We're always welcoming new subscribers here at Cody Tarot. With that said, we're going to move on to the fifth group with the Black Kyanite. Hey, group five, this is if you picked the um, Black Kyanite Blade. Pretty cool kind of stone right there. Um, let's see. So we have, we drew your, well, I drew your Oracle cards um, right off the bat, and then I'm going to shuffle the tarot cards on camera. So your Oracle cards that we drew, all of them flipped up upright. So this is like very strong. This reading wants you to know it exists. <laughs> you know, it's like very important that uh, uh, it's just basically saying like, okay, straight up message, straightforward message. Here we go. So we have a uh, Nightingale right here is your first Oracle card. Um, this is representing you. Then we have you're very close to achieving your goal, Gibbous Moon and Soulmates. So some indication there, and the tarot card, which is representing of your person. So we're going to draw the tarot cards, and then we'll get into the reading. Put that in the middle. draw the rest of the cards. So we'll draw two for over here. And we'll draw two for over here. Let's see, make sure all that's in the camera. Okay, let's flip this over. Yeah, oh my gosh, we've had this card pop out for like most of the readings. I don't know why that always happens. That happens sometimes in the readings. Then we have Nine of Wands. Now that's a new card. With the Eight of Swords in reverse, we have the Five of Swords upright, and we have the Knight of Pentacles upright. Okay, this is a really cute reading. Um, <laughs> so uh, this is really fun because... Um, 
some of the other piles, like as, as fun as they were to read and stuff, like sometimes it's fun to just get like a really cute kind of like a, like lighthearted meeting, you know, because some of the other piles, there was some like some stuff they had to work through and stuff. But um, with this pile, it's interesting because, um, well, let's, let's just get into it. So one thing I see with you over here with Nightingale and the Three of Swords in reverse, there is this element where you you have this ability to work through your pain points or painful things or things that affect your heart that kind of make your heart break or make your heart um, sing. Basically with Nightingale, we have this singing element component right here. So on one hand, you're able to transform your pain into a beautiful song and transmute it right? And kind of like create works of art with it. So this is not just, the nightingale is like a singing, is kind of like a metaphor. Even though some people in this pile, selected this pile, are probably singers or singer-songwriters, and they write through their feelings and song lyrics, and then they sing them. That's something that is coming through strongly here. But also something coming through strongly is like artists or craftspeople, or being able to like use your work as a sort of therapy through your feelings. So some, so a lot of people that pick this pile are going to be really creative types that kind of like when they deal with some kind of pain or pain point in their life, they transmute it through art or they transmute it through some kind of creative activity, right? And what we have here is like this element that there's some kind of project that you're working on, right? And you're really close with, you're very close to achieving your goal means two things, that this project or this next project that you're working on, this big kind of like thing that's in the future, with you're very close to achieving your goal, you can think of this as like, the project's going to come to fruition. But also it's paired with the soulmates card, which means you're going to meet your future spouse or you're going to meet your, your person pretty soon. The person you want to meet, you're going to meet them pretty soon. So with nine of... Uh, with Nine of Wands, there's just something that's getting in the way, and that's kind of like staying too long at this one thing that you're doing. Um, and this could be anything. Um, don't worry, this is not going to be something that you enjoy doing. This is going to be staying too long in a situation where you're kind of, it's painful for you, you know, or you've kind of just been there too long and you're not moving on to something fresh. Um, this thing that you've been through that you've kind of been dealing with, it's it's built up a lot of wounds or a lot of stress, different from the type of pain that you write about in your music or that you create in your art. This is kind of the sort of the situation where with this pain point, um, it's more of like a wear and tear of the physical body or just kind of like a boredom that I'm getting with this position. It's kind of like you've been there for too long and it's time to leave. This could indicate, especially if you're like an artist or creative person, like something about like your day job or something like the fact is maybe you're becoming with very, very close to achieving your goal. Maybe you're becoming very successful in this kind of like creative pursuit that you're doing where you're transmuting your feelings into a beautiful song. Um, aka creation. Um, and maybe it's time to like step away from this kind of like drab job that's kind of like weighing you down a little bit on the physical sense, you know? Nightingales are bird creatures. They need to be free to fly. And so they can't be grounded for too long. And that's kind of what I'm seeing with you is that you don't want to be grounded for too long in like some kind of pursuit that like holds you down. You know, you want to be able to like let loose and fly and be free basically and be able to like you know experience the world get your experiences and transmute your pain into beautiful creations so with you're very close to achieving your goal you have that kind of little obstacle to overcome in this situation and here's the thing if like i said these readings are um they can happen in any time period, right? So for example, if you don't have something, say you are just discovering your creativity and you're very far from achieving your goal, maybe if you like came back to this reading when you're like just becoming successful, you're starting to become successful with your creative projects, your creative career, that's when you need to leave this kind of like more, uh, I wouldn't say stable, just more kind of like, um, replacement money, I guess you could say with this kind of, this kind of career or something like that replacement job, replacement situation. Um, this can even be for some of you, a relationship that has grown stale and is kind of like, um, how do I put this? Like drab or dry or not romantic anymore or something like that. Because what we see you have coming here, you have a true soulmate that you're meeting. And that's something that's one that the cards want to point out, like 
like truthfully is that you have a soulmate and you'll recognize them as such when you meet them, right? Penguins mate for life. So this person that you're meeting, it's not just a, a future spouse or a partner. This is someone who is like, you're going to love for a very, very long time. This is someone who there's going to be no one else compared to this person. It's going to be you and this person and that's it. There's not going to be any kind of other options. You guys are going to be so in love that you're just so focused on each other that it just, it's beautiful really. But anyway, how you guys meet, and this is quite interesting, right? So what we see here with this, uh, we have kind of like a damsel in distress situation, right? Um, you can look at this card and she's kind of like tied up in with all these swords, like she's in prison, right? And when you have the um, kind of like um, castle in the background. So in reverse, I see her as like in the castle or kind of like that's, it's kind of like a, in <laughs> like a, kind of like a interesting way. It's kind of like a Rapunzel situation where you have this knight in shining armor coming to rescue the princess, right? And the princess is tied and bound up and kind of like can't get out of a situation. I'm kind of seeing this could be the same situation right here, but this could just be the fact that it's like, it's a damsel in distress kind of situation. So you could be in some kind of predicament where you're tied up or you're struggling with something or you need help with something. And this person comes in and kind of like helps you achieve something that is like in a, in a very tangible way. So they could rescue you from another person. I'm definitely seeing with these people in this card walking away from this guy that there's an element that like they could be rescuing you from other people or like a rough situation. Um, for some reason, I'm imagining like the scene in Twilight where you have Edward saves Bella from the, the thugs in the city that are trying to like, I don't know what they're trying to do. Well, I, I'm pretty sure I know what they're trying to do, but you know, just like it's kind of like the, you're saving them from like the thugs or something. And you can think of the thugs as like stressors in your life. Like maybe, you know, you're walking to your car and you're carrying like a bunch of supplies. Like you have a, a briefcase or a, say we're going to go with this, like you're a painter over here. You have paint canvases and paints and stuff and you're carrying all this stuff to your car. Maybe it's dropping or falling on the floor. And this person rushes up and like helps you pick, picks, helps you with the like items, right? They like help pick it up and they walk you to your car. And then you go, there's just a recognition with the soulmate card. There's a recognition that this person is like your person. And it's basically because they save you from some situation where you're in pain for from, or you're feeling stressed out or kind of like you're having too much on your plate. With the bo the bonds here and the prison here, they could literally be freeing you from a situation in your life that is keeping you tied down or keeping you held in place. Like I said, you're a nightingale person. This is like, you're the type of person who needs to fly free, needs to have the freedom to roam. Um, and so this person saves you and kind of frees you from that. You know, they let you out of this kind of quote unquote birdcage and let you fly around. And I don't know if you've seen those videos on YouTube where the humans save the animals from some kind of tricky situation. Like there could be like a cat or something like stuck in a gutter or something and the human saves the cat from the gutter and then basically... Like the cat just is so thankful for the human. Maybe it was a stray or something. It's so thankful for the human. It just stays with him for forever. You know, it's one of those things. It's the act of like the fact that they helped free you from this situation that makes you want to be with them, you know, because the fact that they, the thing is they, the, the action that they do is they want to free you. That's the thing. They want to free you. They want to let you be free. They want to let you roam and in a weird way that makes you loyal to them. But yeah, there is a situation where you save them from a tricky situation. It could be as simple as the example I used where you're kind of spilling the supplies, walking your way to your car, and then they kind of help you with that and they kind of walk you to your car and like maybe then you get their number or something or they get your number. Or it could be something where they're saving you from bullies or some guy who's hitting on you that you don't even want to hit on you and he's like, you know, dude, she doesn't want to be hit on and stuff like that. And you kind of come in and say, he kind of comes in and saves the day when you're like in a, in a little spot of trouble, basically. So like I said, very cute reading. <laughs> um, you definitely have a very damsel in distress and the knight in shining armor kind of situation. And it's interesting because with the Knight of Pentacles right here, this is just kind of indicating the fact that you're going to get to know them further. I mean, it's almost like you know. The thing was with the soulmate cards, you know that you that this is your person right up front. Like as soon as they start helping you, you're like, this is my person. They're with me. They're on my side. They're helping free me from this situation. 
And with your very close to achieving your goal, you're going to meet this person at a point in your success with your creative endeavors. So as far as like your creativity goes and your expression with your creativity or your job, and remember, this is not just like artists or singers and stuff. You could be a scientist, right? And maybe you transform some of the hurt in your life into the, into like science and you create new discoveries based on like problems that you've been trying to think about or deal with. You know, this creativity can come out in many different ways, but when you're becoming kind of successful, at this, you're reaching that point of success. That's where this person kind of comes into play. Now with Turtle Spirit and um, Nightingale Spirit, we have kind of like um, a water and an air sign. And the, the thing that's like coming through very strongly for me in this pile is I'm thinking of Gemini and Cancer and how right next to each other, they like right on the summer solstice, the brightest day of the year. And I'm definitely seeing that the connection between you two creates this like bright light between you two that kind of like warms you guys, just like the sun does, you know, like this, like summer, like a summer, like, like when summer comes and the snow melts away, you know, you kind of have this like warm feeling. With turtle card, this person actually has like much of a protective shell and they're kind of like in a weird way, they're slow moving. So even though they're a knight, don't expect someone who's like very fast or kind of like um, too much to handle. This person's very like slow and steady and kind of like in their long run. And it's kind of like interesting how with the knight of pentacles here and the turtle spirit, there's kind of like this element where you guys travel off into the sunset, but it's kind of like with a project in mind, right? Like the fact that they helped you with something here, it's almost like you learn that they can help you in other areas of your life. So they help you with this projects and this creative stuff that you're doing. And you kind of help them with some of this practical stuff that they're doing. And you guys kind of work together with a good synergy. Like this Knight of Pentacles literally represents... Um, both of you together, like your, your unity is a couple, like what you guys represented is kind of like a couple basically. And like I said, this is a soulmate connection. This is someone that you've been in previous lifetimes with. So it is going to be very, very easy to recognize them right off the bat. Um, as it goes with most soulmates, it's kind of like you, there's a recognition. There's like, oh, this person is like, I know this person. There's kind of like that moment where you both look into each other's eyes and it's just like, I know you, you know, like I've, I've known you before. Like, of course I'll give you my number or of course we'll exchange numbers because there's this, this recognition of like kindred spirits, right? Kindred. And there's this light, the this, this summer solstice light examples coming through very strong. You know, with the gibbous moon, it's like the moon is filling up. It's brimming to the brim, you know, it's like right before it's like a full moon, you know, and this like, this just the full like epiphany in the light of the situation. It's like really cute. It's a really cute situation, actually. Um, you meet your person in a very cute way. Um, the only thing I would say is, well, actually, I wouldn't have any advice for you, actually. Um, I think that like, it's going to happen no matter what. You guys are soulmates, so you're probably destined to meet each other in this lifetime. Um, so yeah, all you have to do is wait for the time. And when, you know, you start getting more I think what, what I would say right now is focus on this kind of like projects that you're doing and transmuting this kind of like energy into creative works. Um, eventually, you'll probably need to leave this side thing that's causing you a little bit of stress and tension. Um, and then it's just smooth sailing from there. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, if you like that reading, uh, you can like or comment below. If you really like this reading, feel free to subscribe to my channel. We're always welcoming new subscribers here at Cody Tarot. With that said, we're going to move on to the very last group, group number six with the Aquamarine. Hello, group six. This is if you picked the um, Aquamarine crystal right here. Um, kind of a pretty Aquamarine color. <laughs> Um, so for this reading, I already pre-drew the tarot, or the, not the, the oracle cards for you today. Um, these are the ones that flipped up upright. Uh, you got two Wisdom of the Oracle cards. I'll show you both of those right now, just so you can see them. You have Co-Create and No Place Like Home. Um, no Place Like Home, I'm leaving on top because that's how they flipped up. And, um, we have another card right here. And then after I reveal that card, we're going to shuffle the tarot cards and get your tarot cards and then we'll get into your reading. So for your Moonology card, we have A New Romantic Cycle Begins. And then we'll get into your tarot cards. Oh, you also have Starfish and Sea Serpent. So Starfish is representing you and Sea Serpent is representing your person. OK, 
Okay, I saw the um, Eight of Cups Reverse flip out, but it didn't fall out of the deck, so. That to me indicates like holding on to the past, but we'll see what if that means anything in the rest of the reading. We pull three cards directly and then another three, two over here. Let's see, you can come up like that. There we go. Okay, let's see what your tarot cards say. We have the world card reversed. We have queen of wands reversed. Uh, this is the card that flipped up. So I'm glad it's in the reading because I was like a little confused by it. But this is the card that um, flipped up when I was doing the card. So I'm cool, it's cool that we drew it too. And we have queen of swords reversed. And we have seven of cups reversed. Okay, this is quite interesting as far as your reading goes. Um, <laughs> um, we have some interesting things here. So with most of the other piles, there was a lot about them on their journey to their person. And usually that's how it goes when I'm reading for like you guys. It's like, um, there's a lot about like, oh, what do I have to do? Or what do we, you know, if it's, if it's about a self-improvement thing, it's like, what do I have to self-improve? And then for, you know, if it's just a meeting thing, it's just like how you guys meet and stuff. But like, this is how you meet. But most of the situation is on their end. So most of the reading is like, kind of like backwards like this. Like it's mostly like what's going on with them. Um, this is kind of like your vibe that like you can, um, the, the stuff that like you can kind of like do, I guess. But with the world card in reverse, you're actually pretty solid where you're at. Um, it's interesting. With the world card reverse, this means you're literally, with the starfish card, you're like sending out signals and you're attracting things to like your home environment. Like you're pulling the world into your home. Um, how should I, how better can I describe this? Um, imagine yourself as like a psychic beacon, right? And you're kind of like, you're kind of like, you know, if you are like manifesting, right? You're kind of, you know, you have your desire, you know, what you want to manifest and then you create the feeling or, or the, you, you script or whatever, and you kind of want to manifest it. And then you wait for it to kind of mosey on into your backyard, you know, from like, you know, some other country, <laughs> you know, it's kind of what I'm like a vibe I'm getting right here. Cause we have the world card, which means you're drawing in things from all over the place into your immediate, like home environment. So wherever you live, like you might live in a place and you might notice there's a lot of people visiting from like other countries or other locations. Or if you live, you know, like a good example of this is like someone who lives in like a college town. You would meet a lot of people from other locations who are visiting or living in that college, right? But this is kind of like an interesting thing. You're literally pulling in people to your area with no place like home and co-create. You're pulling in people and that's kind of what's pulling in this person is you're kind of sending off vibrations that it's like, you know, I'm ready to meet some people. You know, like with a new romantic cycle begins, it's like, I'm ready to meet some people. I'm ready to meet the one, show me the people. And it's interesting because with starfish, it's almost like you're sending off vibrations everywhere. Like you're kind of like really excited about this. It's almost like you've discovered some kind of trick to manifesting where you're like, okay, I can just summon whoever I want into my existence. And that's who I get to like, have fun with for, you know, however long or whatever, you know, Libras also can be a card about like a good solid friend and stuff. So not just a romantic cycle begins, but a cycle with all these people. And it's kind of like, you're just summoning different people to you. Like, okay, I want this person, I want this person, I want this person. I want the type of person from here. Like, it would be cool to meet someone from, you know, like Germany or something, or it'd be cool to meet someone from like Japan or India or something. And then you kind of like summon them towards you. So it's kind of like interesting with the world reverse, it's like you're bringing people towards you. And what we see here, I, it's hard, gonna be hard to pull up all the cards, but I'll just show you, hopefully you can see from up there. Um, 
This guy, for the sea serpent person, your person coming in, he's looking this way. The queen of swords is looking this way. This guy's looking this way. This person's looking this way. And this is you sitting pretty content over here in the world card looking this way, right? Looking and waiting like, okay, I'm looking in your direction. All you have to do is come towards me, <laughs> right? Now, this other person's going to have to go on kind of like a journey or kind of like a little thing, you know, because... Um, what we see here with the sea serpent, with the sea serpent chasing its own tail, we have a situation with that in the seven of cups in reverse, where this person is like distracted by all the wonderful things that they could achieve, right? They're distracted by all the possibilities, all the things that are like in their environment, um, you know, like they might like one day, like focus on one thing and then like jump to another project or something like that. They're fascinated by like all these exciting options in their life. But really what happens is like once you send out your little starfish signal towards them, they kind of start to buckle down or they start to see options as like more viable than other ones, right? Um, and they kind of like to make the decision to like, with the queen of swords, um, they cut through these options and they're kind of showing themselves the clear path forward. So we see right here is... Um, with the seven of cups here, we have the clouds right here. The clouds kind of drop down below this person and they can finally see clearly in the clear blue sky. And they kind of are pointing the way forward and they have this sort of truth where they're cutting through these clouds, cutting through these illusions of all these different options and these kind of things, these fantasies that are not really, really real in the first place. And they're kind of cutting away to show them the way. This leads them to this... Um, Eight of Cups, the Eight of Cups reverse card, where they're actually like leaving behind their past and starting to make their way and travel to a new location. They're leaving behind things in their past. I definitely see that this person doesn't have a problem leaving behind things in their past. Like they're okay starting fresh, starting new, um, and moving on the direction as long as it's the correct direction for them, as long as it's the path that they're planning and they want to achieve, right? So they move through this situation. They might travel. Um, they might have to travel to meet you, but they're actually going on this path and they're following their heart and they're not quite sure where their heart's leading them. And it's one of those things. It's like, you know, kind of like the chicken or the egg, like which came first, the chicken or the egg? What came first, you manifesting them or their desire to meet you kind of spontaneously made you want to manifest them? You know, it's kind of one of those things, you know, like it's just, but the thing is with the starfish card, you're kind of this magnet for new things. You're kind of this magnet for people from all over the world, basically to come meet you. And this sea serpent person is just one of them. Now, the sea serpent person is a very powerful figure indeed. It is one of the elements of spirit in the deck, which is the circle card in this deck. And it's there's only seven of them, and they kind of represent different chakras, right? And I believe the sea serpent represents the sacral chakra. So this person's going to have, like, be really in touch with their emotions and their creativity. They're going to be kind of like, they could be an artist, but what I'm seeing here is that they're just mainly focused on their own, like, future goals and kind of glowing up, basically. Because what we see with the queen of wands once they achieve and they get close to you once they get sort of in that area where they want to go which is kind of the area that you're at they have this feeling of like glowing up or feeling like they want to dress differently or more uniquely or kind of like express themselves in a different mysterious kind of way and so you'll definitely notice them by their colorful garb their their the way they dress basically um, this person might wear like lots of crystals or might have kind of like a flashy way of dressing. They dress very colorfully. Um, yeah, and there's something about the Queen of Wands, this person being alternately kind of like shy and at the same time outgoing. So they might at one moment be really reserved and you're like, okay, are they going to say anything? And then the next moment they're just like talking their butt off, like just kind of constantly, you know? But anyway, they're moving towards you. And that's kind of the point of like how the whole thing right here is how you're meeting them is they're moving towards you. And it's funny, the cards kind of want to tell you their journey because it's almost like you don't know how these people are coming to you, right? You don't know what they're going through to get to you. You know, um, with the with the world card here in the starfish, it's kind of like you're just this beacon, like pulling them in, you know, but they do go through a journey to get to you. And that's kind of the journey that they're going on. And kind of like how you're going to know them, too, is by like this journey that they went through and like them talking about, you know, I just was so distracted by all these things in my life. And once I finally cut through the bullshit 
right? I was able to leave that, those things that are, you know, kind of clouding my vision and move my way into a thing that was more pure and true to me, you know? And this is where they kind of change into this kind of queen of wands energy. And that's kind of where this new romantic cycle begins. You're gonna, even though you're pulling in a lot of people on your end, it's with this new romantic cycle begins, they're gonna feel with no place like home and co-create, it's almost like with their sacral chakra too, there is a lot of creativity in the connection. Like you'll be able to create together, which is kind of a beautiful thing. And with no place like home, they're going to really fit into your environment. And it's going to be really like cool how they kind of jive with everything that's going on with you because they've been looking for this kind of, they, they've kind of seeking this environment out. The fact that they end up in this environment is not by coincidence. They belong there with you. It's just interesting because I can definitely see you're more of like a homebody. Like you're not the type to like go in adventure places or you're not the type to go in kind of like, um, how do I put this? You're not the type to want to venture far out from your world. You're like, you know what? You can come to me. <laughs> you know, like I get, I get this vibe where you're like, I'm not budging. Like if, if I'm going to meet someone, they're coming into my territory. And so that's interesting how that happens because they do wander into your territory. Um, and with the new romantic cycle begins, it's going to feel the connection with them at the at first when you guys meet over here. It's going to feel very romantic and playful. I'm definitely getting some friendship vibes. They might seem like a friend at first, or they might kind of seem friendly with you at first. But with the romantic cycle, there is going to be some romance there. There's going to be some underlying tones of romance. So think of a... If you could combine a friendship and a romance, what would that be? There could be like some crushing elements where you're not really sure if the person likes you or not. And they're kind of like, oh, you know, like, you know, oh, yeah, you're attractive, but you might not know what they mean. You know, with the Queen of Wands, this person can be very mysterious. This They have this kind of reserved and extroverted nature where one moment you don't know what they're thinking. The next moment they're like just sharing their thoughts completely. So... <laughs> Get ready for that. And uh, yeah, it's looking really like happy actually. With no place like home, it's true. It's like your home, there's no place like it. You really enjoy where you live, I see. And you really don't want to like branch out anywhere or go anywhere. It's like you really are just happy where you are. And with co-create, you're kind of creating with the universe to bring in the people you need into your environment. You know, it's it's one of those things where it's interesting. There's the whole phrase of like, wherever you go, you take yourself with you. Right. And that's kind of like true right here, but it's almost like wherever you are, you bring yourself into your environment. And that's kind of what I'm seeing with you is that you kind of extend out into your environment and you kind of like make it your own, basically, wherever you are. And it's almost important for you to stay put because you're literally a beacon attracting these people. So as long as you're standing still, people are going to come into your environment and kind of fill up your area, basically. So yeah, very cool. You're not only attracting your person, which is the sea serpent person, but you're also attracting other people into your life at this in this certain stage that you're in where you're attracting these people. I think you really figure out some kind of key to manifesting, manifesting people into your life, and that's what brings them in. And I think that's uh, a really cool thing. So uh, if you like that reading, uh, you can uh, like or comment below. If you really like this reading, feel free to subscribe to my channel. We're always welcoming new subscribers here on Cody Tarot. Blah, blah, blah. Trying to talk. Talk, too much talking for these readings. Anyway, uh, that was the last reading for today. Uh, I really enjoyed reading for everyone. And uh, thank you for watching. And I will see you in the next Pick a Card. Bye.